Hello and welcome to the show. I am your host, your cheap mama, Brenda Kilhoffer. And today I have Anna Felix with Mod Financial on with us. And she is going to share some great tips, especially right now while everybody is in vacation planning mode um, around your money and your assets when it comes to vacation and vacation planning and um, planning for your future. So um, Anna, take it away and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Brenda, for having me. Um, it's always great to get to share with others things that, that I've learned from being in the industry. As you mentioned, I'm with a company called Mod Financial. I am a smart money strategist. And what that means is I help people strategize the best way to plan their future, what strategies are the best for them. And it also means that because I'm talking with people all the time, I kind of notice trends and things that are happening in times of year, questions that people are having. And so I, I enjoy sharing that with, with others. My own personal journey, just very briefly, I became a widow a little over 10 years ago. And one of the things that I realized very early on in that whole situation was that I didn't feel really empowered around my money and what was the best way to um, recover from that, kind of initially start over and you know figure out what were gonna be the next best money decisions for me to make. And so I'm very passionate about helping other women uh, learn those things and, you know, make the best choices and have a safe place where they can ask questions, get information. Uh, there's never a bad question. And it's great to just have a filter that you can, you know, we hear a lot of things from a lot of different entities. What is good, simple information? And so that's what I'm always happy to share. So as I, as I mentioned, I, as I've just been meeting with people in the last month or so, one of the kickbacks that I get is, well, you know, it, this is, it's summertime and we have more time off and we're taking vacations and we're planning vacations. And so I don't have time to meet with you. And I <laughs> totally appreciate that. I get that this is a busy time and it's an exciting time, but what's come up for me is that people spend a lot of time for this special time in their life to spend with their family. And it's super important. I mean, especially after coming off of a global pandemic, like we definitely need to be spending time with everyone, mm -hmm. just getting out and, and feeling normal again. And so these are, these are really important. These are gonna be an important vacation, probably things that people are gonna remember for a lifetime. Like we got out of the pandemic, we survived, and this was where we went with our family that following year. And so mm -hmm. really important. I know you have a, a vacation coming up. And so what, what I wanted to share though, was that when we think of 20, 30 years from now in retirement, we're going to spend a lot more time with our family and we have a lot of great plans that, that we want to be able to put in place and crazy enough decisions that we make today are going to in fact affect how powerfully and abundantly we're going to be able to live in the future for that much longer vacation. We might say, mm -hmm. we might call that retirement. Um, I tell clients, think about the fact that in retirement, every day is a Saturday and you're going to want to be able to have, um, you know, be able to do those things that you love doing, whether that's golfing or traveling or spending time with the grandkids or all of those things. So it's super important to take some time now. And, and I'm suggesting that maybe while you're planning your vacation, you take an hour or so and start having the conversation with the spouse about what are some things that we can do now to start facilitating our retirement later on? And it's been kind of an interesting conversation. And I've had some clients say, you know, this was really a great idea because we did have a couple more days at home and we were making, you know, these decisions and how much are we spending here or there? Or what are we going to do? Is it going to be, you know, a road trip? Is it going to be, are we going to go on a plane? Are we going to go on a cruise ship? But while we're having that conversation, let's also take some time and just start to set a few things in place 
about what we want to do long term for um, our longer vacation, longer exciting future. So that was just one of the things that that's kind of just been coming up a lot and talking with 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 clients about you know we've come through this pandemic we've maybe we've accumulated some debt i know that's something that that you're helping um, people with which is awesome and maybe we've acquired some debt that we aren't feeling great about but i uh, know i'm just i'm just telling people because it's all about your money story too it's mm -hmm. all about the things that you tell yourself and so i've had some be really negative and hard on themselves like oh we we had to take on debt and we had you know job situations change and whatever and I'm just I have more of a message of just you know appreciate the fact that you've come through what you've come through and if that meant that you acquired some debt then get with some help someone like Brenda someone that can you know, help you figure out, okay, what's the quickest path out of this? What's the best way to, to do this in the, in the most effective way? And just appreciate that you are where you are and you'll quickly be able to figure out a way out of it and have the thought that it's going to be better in the future, that we learn some things in the mm -hmm. pandemic that are going to be really important for our future, like just basic, simple things that having an emergency fund is a really good idea. That's something that when I ask people what they've learned, right. <laughs> and I know you, you probably have been addressing this, you know, long before the pandemic, but it certainly came up for a lot of people that, you know, I didn't have enough of a cushion. And so the importance of, of being able to do that and set that aside and figure out, you know, what that good number is. Each family is different. I say traditionally, you know, six months of living expenses is a good thing to, to put, to have in that, in that emergency fund. But, you know, if you're both entrepreneurs and working for yourself, it, a better number might be nine or 10 months, you know, just depending it, there isn't, there are no hard and fast rules about this but just figuring out what is what is the best thing for you and and sticking to that and realizing that you know it's good to have that money set aside so that when things unexpected happen you're not freaking out and you're not stressing out because that's one of the important things about our thought process about money is to always be in a positive mode like you know th this is the situation but we're working towards making it better we're, we're going to, to be able to achieve the goals that we have. And the more, the more that we empower ourselves with good information, we're going to be able to do that. And so trying to take away that negativity and that stress and the, and, you know, the, the uh, judgment of ourselves that, oh, I took this on and I, I didn't want to take on this debt. Well, you know, that's the situation, but we're here now. We've, we've survived through some pretty crazy times, really never, ever happened before. And so just appreciate that we are where we are and what can we do best to move forward and, and do it in a positive way. And it's been amazing because people are like, you know, I didn't really even think about like, like I wasn't giving myself the grace of, hey, you know, <laughs> you're here and, you know, now what's the best thing that we can do going forward? So that was just a, a definite message that, that I wanted to get out. I just feel like it, it's important because a lot of people are in that situation. Others have pivoted in amazing ways and have started businesses that they didn't think they were going to start. And so now they're looking at, wow, I have a lot more control of my life. I have a lot more control of my money I, because I can, I can make as much as I want. I don't have these corporate structures that I was under. And so it's also now a really good time to empower people with, okay, now that I have money and I, and I have a different structure, maybe I'm not required to participate in the company 401k because I'm no longer working for them, then what are the things that I can do moving forward? And so um, it's exciting to be able to have those conversations as well, because a lot of people are following their passions and they're doing things that they didn't think that they would be able to do anytime soon, but all of these changes have brought about 
the possibility that maybe that is the best option for their family and pursuing things that they're excited about. Absolutely. I think in every economy, there's opportunity, right? And, you know, there's there's opportunity for us to grow, whether we stay where we're at and learn from, you know, what we didn't like about that economy or um, so I you there's so many cool things that I just want to unpack. Um, one of the things one of the first things you had mentioned, you had talked about, you know, your own story and mm -hmm. Um, becoming a widow and getting to navigate through now what? Now, how do I support myself? Now, what's here? Um, and then you had also mentioned that it's really right now and it is a good time and any time is a good time to sit down and have some conversations. And you brought up having the conversations with your spouse. So you're, you're doing this day in and day out. And I do believe that in every coupleship, there tends to be one who controls the finances and one who just kind of goes along with whatever is said. And to keep the peace, oftentimes there's not a lot of conversations, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you see people having success with these conversations or how do you recommend people begin to have those conversations and, and share a little bit about you know what, what the alternative is if they don't? Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. So, you know, again, I'm always about, you know, no stress and ease. So I always say, you know, pick a time and say, you know, there's, there's a conversation I'd love to have, you know, take out a bottle of wine, just nice, super relaxed and just kind of, and, and I tell people, no, use, use what you've heard, what I've said, like, just say something like, you know, I heard something really interesting today that, you know, 82% of couples, and that is a number don't talk about money and how important it is to do so. And I would just love for us not to be that part of that statistic. And, you know, can we just sit down and just have a, a conversation about that and maybe be, you know, general, depending, as you said, every, every couple is different, but, you know, for some people, you know, I have some concerns about, you know, maybe what we've just been through and we've just made some big changes, you know, maybe, maybe in the couple, you know, someone is no longer working a corporate job and they are pursuing their dreams. So I really want to be super smart about this. So maybe that would be one scenario where like, you know, how can we really make sure that we capitalize on these great changes that we've made? Or maybe, maybe the scenario isn't as positive, but it's like, we've made it through, you know, how, how can we maximize what we've got going now and plan towards you know, figuring out what we should be doing next. But I definitely say, I mean, you know, if, if you aren't wine drinkers, then coffee, whatever, whatever that is. Um, but, you know, just kind of come together in just a very calm, uh, you know, good time, maybe a specific place. If you have a nice place outside that you like sitting, just to really make it just a, a, a not a complicated conversation, but just can we just start the conversation? Because I've heard that, you know, a lot of couples are not doing it and it leads to a lot of problems. And man, the problems that it leads to could just be <laughs> so many and it really depends on everyone's individual situation. But what frequently happens when there's a death and I have to say that we had a lot of things in place, but even so it wasn't enough and there was no clear path of what we were specifically doing. We, in my personal case, we'd had a very severe car accident five years before that. And we were just trying to recover from all that. We had, my husband had brain injuries, my daughter did too. And so there's a lot of recovery and therapy in place. And we really hadn't had that conversation of, you know, what is our goal for the next five years, given the fact that we've had to just sell our, our business and because of the accident. So a conversation like that would have been super, super useful because it would have helped me already kind of have an idea of, of what would have been really helpful. So the point is that at any given time, you could lose your mate and always having that idea of, you know, if, if you've had that conversation and you guys kind of have a game plan then it is so helpful for, for the one that's left behind. I mean, 
I have so many conversations with clients about, and in fact, I'm even thinking of, of putting a, a small ebook together about some of the immediate things that you need to do, because when that horrible occasion occurs and, and hopefully it, it, it doesn't come about, you know, sooner than later, but things as simple as not even having access to account information. I mean, I tell, I encourage clients now to, you know, write all that information down, share it with each other. You know, I had a widow about a year ago that couldn't even make the house payment because she did not have access to the account, didn't know how to access it, how to even do that with five children, not sure how to make the house payment. It was, it was an incredible stressor that she didn't need on top of everything else that was going on. So, you know, just, and, and I also conversely um, met with a gal about six months ago that had lost her husband two years ago, long before I had met her. And she had found a letter from her husband in his file box that was, was labeled just in case. And he had listed like all the information that she would need to access all of his things. And she said, you know, I found a lot of things in that file box, things that I'd forgotten, things that I, you know, little notes he'd written for me and all of them were so precious to me. But she said that was what I considered the best love letter that he could have ever left me because it helped me so much to know in one place where I could get a lot of that information. And so I think sometimes the idea of, you know, talking about death, it isn't so much that it's about talking about how can we, you know, prepare each other for hopefully something that's not going to happen, but it is such a, a true, uh, a true way to show how much you care and how much you want to help someone that if that ever happened, you know, to, and, and, and have that in place. So that's another thing. I mean, when we're talking about having that conversation, yeah, it's not fun, but again, you know, you heard this conversation today, you know what, there's people out there that are really suffering because they didn't take that time. And so I would just encourage, you know, everyone to, be open to not looking at it as, as a negative thing, but very much so a positive thing that, you know, we'd love to have things in place and in order because what usually happens if you have all this stuff in place, then you never need to use it. Like you never have it. Um, but if you don't take the time and you don't plan it and then something happens, it just makes it so much more difficult. So um, anything from, you know, the family not being able to stay in the home that, that they're in, to any number of ramifications for not having that, um, those things planned um, are, are huge. And no one, when they're, when they're talking about it now, wants to ever see that for the family. So one of the things I'll tell clients is, you know, what if we killed off your husband or your wife right now and we'll be having that conversation, I'll be talking with them. What do you see happening with the family? Like what would happen if tomorrow that stream of income ended and just helping them for a moment, just appreciate what that would be and then be like, oh my gosh, yeah, no, we, we cannot have that happen. So what do we need to put in place to prevent, you know, those, those, those scenarios that you're seeing in your head. And after someone has that conversation then they're just like, oh my goodness, I actually feel so relieved, like it was kind of something in the back of my head that I was thinking, you know, we should talk about this or, or you hear, you know, something in your community or, you know, extended family or in the neighborhood of someone that's been going through this or, or you drive by and you see, you know, someone setting up a car wash for an unexpected death. All of those things are happening because people didn't take the time to have that conversation. And it puts, the family, the community, a lot of people having to step up and help when, you know, if we just plan these things out, have these conversations, that wouldn't necessarily have to be the case. So true. Um, and, you know, and then you, as, as we dive into the whole, you were talking about the money story, right? And, and what we tell ourselves and, and you went into 
the savings and having and, and recommending six months of savings. And, you know, that really plays into your money story and you're thinking whether you're in a positive, abundant mindset or whether you're in a fear and scarcity mindset, right? Um, if you've got that money in savings and there's a job loss or there's a pandemic or there's an auto accident or something occurs that, um, that creates a loss of income, knowing that's there one creates this, this, just this story around we're okay. Right. And so now when you go to find a new solution, to find a new job, to find a new, you've got posture, right? You, you can go in with confidence versus to those interviews versus feeling scared and beat up and fearful and oh my gosh what if i don't get the job and and now you're stumbling on your words because you're focusing on the what ifs but if it's there the chances of having to use it i feel like they just because just because the mindset that you're in they they shift dramatically because you know hey we're okay there's plenty there's plenty we're good like you know let's uh you know, and now it's about, well, I don't, I don't really want to spend it because <laughs> I like having it there. Right. I like the comfort of having it there. Let me go do something about my situation or, or shift things. Um, what, what other kinds of, um, when you're talking about that money story, what other, what, what other kinds of stories do people tend to tell themselves? Well, oh man, that that's like, that's a whole three hour conversation. And, and I love what you just said, Brenda, because I just recently had a client that um, lost her job. It was just kind of a, a shifting in the company because of everything that's happened. Now everybody's going back to work and they just realized they wanted to, to, to remodify how they were working the department. And because she's been working with me for some time and has a lot of things in place that are a cushion for her, she went into an interview and it was, you know, it was kind of what she wanted, not perfectly what she wanted, but she could have made changes with it. And it, it emboldened her to tell them, you know what, I really like this position, but I would, if, if, if you were to hire me, I would tweak it this way, but you'd have to pay me more. And because she went in with the confidence because of what you're talking about, like, you know, she knew she didn't have to have this job. They took the whole thing. They loved her idea. They're, they're, they're adjusting, you know, the scope of what she's going to be able to do. And they agreed to pay her more. And that was her first interview. And she was just like, I would have never come from that place if I was in the, in the thing of, I have to have this job, like if I do not get this job, like, you know, we can't pay the bills next month, which is what, what happens when you don't have those things in place. So um, just to what you said, that is so important. And that is actually ties in with our money story because it, it's crazy. I realized for myself, as I began this journey, that there were things that I picked up as a child because of the situation that my family was in or, you know, things that even my grandparents had gone through, that there are certain sayings, certain things that you hear, you know, um, we're not made of money, uh, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, um, shut the lights because, you know, the, the electric company is richer than we are, um, you know, all of those type of things. And you don't really realize it. And I know I didn't for myself until I really just took some time to, you know, think about what is really my relationship with money and what unempowering things have I maybe taken on that were not even really mine, but those type of sayings of, you know, I don't have enough or I can't afford it or, um, you know, I, I recently talked with, with another money coach and she helps people and, and she was saying that one of her clients always had the notion that you should, you would always run out of money before the end of the month. And when she started really unpacking that, she realized that there was really no reason 
for her to have that occurrence in her life. For her mother, it had been an issue because her mother was on welfare and, and raising three kids. And that was really her situation. But this gal really made enough money in the month to not have that scenario, but because she just so had that ingrained in her head that maybe she would make some, some purchases that were not necessary, or she would extend herself in doing things and like fulfill that prophecy of literally running out of money before the end of the month. And when she started realizing like, oh my gosh, like, I think that's just like an internal thing that I just think has to be the case. And we talked about, you know, mid month, what if you took some of that money and put it in savings? Because that's what she would do. She would like towards the end of the month is when it seemed like she'd go shopping and get stuff that she didn't really need. And we were able to really turn that around. And she was like, wow, I never even thought it was like this, this story running in the back of her head that she wasn't even really aware of, but she was, she was making it happen every time because it just, subconsciously that's what she was doing and when you figure out what those things are and, and they could be so many different things um but when you think back to to what you know what did I hear a lot of as a child what you know what are the things that I think of are those things really true because now her story is I'm saving money I'm growing I always have enough I never run out of money before the month runs out. And now that's what she's living. She's living that. So the idea that nothing changed in her life, the amount of money she made didn't change. She didn't change her job. She didn't change anything else. She just changed that story that was going on in the back of her head that she wasn't even aware of that. Now I do have enough money. I never run out of money before the end of the month. And now those are the things that are happening. And so that's the money story. You can really, first of all, unpack what maybe might be, you know, disempowering you and then create a new one. And that's what I loved was the idea that I could actually create a new money story. Like I could say, yes, I always have enough money. I have this much money saved aside. I'm putting this much money away for retirement. I will always have enough. Those money comes to me consistently and in large amounts from unknown sources. All of those things can be the truth if you decide that they are and you can rewrite your money story. So that for me was an empowering, empowering notion that I could change all of those negative things and turn them into really whatever I wanted them to be. I just had to acknowledge and, and recognize that. Absolutely. Because I, I do believe that it is our belief systems that really create the habits in our lives, right? You know, if right. we if we have belief systems around, you know, positive money stories, then we do positive things with our money. We don't blow it. We don't, we don't um, make poor decisions then but if we have the the belief that there's never enough well then we make poor decisions that really end up fulfilling that it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy mm-hmm. um i know one of the things that years ago no matter where i no matter what situation a friend of mine had said you know that they always keep a 100 hundred dollar bill in their wallet it's always there mm-hmm. You know, because when that's there, let's say you have options, no matter what, you know, and, and, and examples that they gave were, you know, let's say, you know, you get off an airplane and you're headed to an important meeting and you're going to be late and the line's super long. You could whip that hundred dollar bill out and ask for somebody else's place in line. You know, it gives you always have options if that's there. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so I do that. And I never spent it never, you know, I never spend it. It's always there. Um, I've yet to have a need to spend it, but I'm not sitting there at the grocery store. Like I used to going, Oh my God, I hope there's enough. Oh my God. I hope there's enough. Right. You know what? If there, if there isn't, I could pull that out, but you know, there always is. So, all right, well, we're going to take a quick break, uh, come back and have some more conversation 
around what, how, how to get started, how to really, what types of things people should be planning for. And I do want to touch on the whole vacation thing, because um, I'm, I'm curious uh, about a lot of the vacations and you know, when, when people don't have the money to put aside for savings yet, we're going on a vacation where that's coming from and and how that can, um, how that can lead. So let's jump uh, back in here after a break. Okay. Hello, good people out there in podcast world, cyber world, interrupt your programming real quickly to tell you about our sponsor medium lauren robbins me and lauren robbins if you look at someone who's warm loving genuine and has a welcome energy like talking to a friend lauren is the one to talk to she's direct she will tell you what you need to know not what you want to hear and will comfort you when you cry or when you are upset like a good friend would if you are a new client she will make you understand what you requested before you even start the session or service visit media lauren robbins.com for sessions and services get hooked up with an endorsed medium today Hi, and welcome back. You are on the Cheap Mama Life podcast. I am your host, Brenda Kilhoffer. Today, I have Anna Felix with Mod Financial with me. And we were just talking about money stories. And um, we had some discussion around uh, having conversations with your spouse around um, your future savings and what happens, uh, perhaps if one um, ends up passing away or is no longer capable of that income and that support and retirement and what that looks like. And one of the things that Anna talked about right off the bat was that many folks don't have the time to meet with her right now because they are going on vacation or planning a summer vacation um, and either don't have the time to meet and maybe don't have the money to invest in their future. And, you know, that's always one of my mentors once said, if you have to finance your fun, you didn't earn it. And, you know, and I think a lot of times that we have this, um, you know, and I guess this is one of those, you know, money stories as well, this I deserve belief system, right? I deserve a vacation. I've worked hard. I deserve a vacation. And this mentor says, you deserve a vacation when you have the money in your bank account to pay for that vacation. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, so let's talk about that a little bit. What, what kinds of things should somebody have in place or be thinking about if they are planning a vacation right now? I mean, what would you say that, at a bare minimum, they should already have in place in their financial vault, so to say, before they plan a vacation. Yeah, well, that it, it's so interesting the way you brought that up because it's true. And and I think I had mentioned just this year, everyone you know definitely is feeling the need to get away. But it, that's the thing is you really have to to think about you know we have that feeling of you know, I deserve this, like I, the kids need to get out. And, and maybe, maybe this year it's like an absolute necessity. Like people really need to get out and, and be away, but the degree and the way that you look at that can, can be totally different. I mean, as you mentioned, if you don't have the money for the vacation that, that you're planning on taking, um, then how is that going to impact you, you know, next year or even six months from now, if something else were to come up in your life unexpected. So, you know, obviously I can't tell people, yeah, you can't afford that vacation. You, you should not be taking that, but maybe look at it and revamp how you're going to do it. I mean, essentially the idea of a vacation is you're getting away from the normal, um, you know, things that you have to do and you're just going and spending time somewhere else. I mean, if you, if you don't have the money to do the cruise and, and to fly the family to Europe, that doesn't mean that you can't vacation. That just means that you can't necessarily do that one or you shouldn't. Like, you know, people have credit cards and, and they, can, they can reward themselves and, and pat themselves on the back and say, I deserve this, as you mentioned. But what does that look like long-term and paying that 
how is that going to affect them building that savings fund that we talked about or building towards retirement when it's the, the long-term vacation? So, you know, maybe even just rethinking what it is that, that would constitute a vacation for the family. I've talked to a couple families recently that they're not, they're not going far from home but they're going to do some things not too far from home that are going to be fun that the kids actually said that they wanted to do the things that they were looking forward to doing that they hadn't been able to just because of COVID. And they're going to be affordable activities that the kids have chosen to do. So that's what they wanted to do was, you know, make sure the kids felt like they were having a, a good break before going back to school, but it's not going to put them in a negative situation financially because they can easily fund that so sometimes it's you know we think that we have to do the traditional you know big huge trip and go spend a lot of money when you know I know this one family uh, they're they're friends of ours they they got the kids together and said okay you know for a year you were pretty much stuck at home what is it you really want to do and the kids just wanted to be out and about like they didn't even really what they wanted to do was very easy to fund financially. And so they're going to do that and they're going to do it, you know, like 10 days of, of doing that, but coming back home, um, all of those things that they're going to go do allow them to, to return home at night. So they don't have the expense of, of the hotel, which is, you know, the, one of the bigger ones and the kids have, have planned it themselves. And I thought that was a genius idea of, you know, being able to do that. Um, and, you know, they're, they're all sharing, like as a community, there was um, a friend that had one of those huge screens and someone else has a pool. And so they're throwing a pool party and having this huge movie night and all the kids are getting together and, you know, just a bunch of those activities all set together and, and everyone's excited about that. So sometimes it's just changing what your definition of rewarding yourself and having the vacation is um, and, and staying true to what your plan is. I mean, what I always try to encourage clients to do is, you know, you come up with these money formulas, but a great one for like the future is if you could use the 50, 30, 20 rule, if 50% of your money went to paying for all your bills and all the necessities that you have, 30% went to the future year, you and the 20% you could save for fun. And then that would be for vacation later for, for money. Now, if, if you could in time set your, your money schedule to fit that for the future, you always have money for vacation. You're still saving money for the future and you're still covering all your bills. Now, for some people, when you get started with that, they're like, how could, how could I pay all my bills with, you know, 50% of what I bring in, like that's not enough. Well, that may not be the case now, but if that's your goal and you make that, that's what I'm going to do. You can totally do that. So when you start, maybe it's 80, 20 and, and 10% is going to the future you and 10% is going to the fun, the fun, the fun fund. Um, but if you start having that conversation and you start planning and, and doing that, it's surprising what you can start to create and just have that as a goal. Um, but I do agree that you should be putting something aside to have fun. And maybe, like I said, you can't have that big fancy vacation yet. But if you really think of it in terms of if I'm, if I'm doing this now and I can't really afford it, then I am really negatively impacting everything moving forward. So, um, you know, that can really hinder the enjoyment of that if you're just, if you're forcing it. But if you are enjoying to the, the ability that you can, and, and trust me, you can get really creative with, with ways to, to reward everyone with a good time without it being a financial drain mm -hmm. and then spending towards it. I mean, I've seen families mm -hmm. that have created a vacation fund and the kids you know, do lemonade stands and they get really creative <laughs> because they get to be a part of it and they're super right. excited about it. And then everybody's working towards that. That time and that enjoyment is, is even more exciting than if you just paid it with a credit card and, and you couldn't really do it. 
and you know the the negative stress that that creates. Right. I think what people don't think about is that when they pay it with a credit card, and you brought it up perfectly with the fifty percent rule. No, most Americans can't pay their bills with 50% because the vast majority are paying up to 2500 about $2500 a month in interest mm-hmm. right so the second you put something on the credit card it's no longer money that you have it's no longer work that you've done it's now your future capacity your future work So you're not building much of a future if you're spending your future paying for your past fun or vehicles or whatever. And that, you know, once you do start to eliminate that debt, that 50% becomes very realistic and Mm -hmm. very easy to maintain. And, um, And now instead of having the power of compounding, which works fabulously well for the credit card companies and the banks, oh, yeah. um, uh, you know, they're, they're, everything is funding, funded off of that for them. Now you have that power of compounding working for you. Yeah. And so um, that takes us into how, how then when somebody achieves that is able to do that, how do they begin to compound that um, for their future? Yeah, so there's there's a variety of ways to do that. Um, one of the things that we like to utilize is something called the private reserve account, and that allows people to create their own bank and experience those compound interests that you talked about in their benefit. So rather than putting, you know, we talk about having that savings, you know, six months or whatever in the bank, but anything over that, you want to be growing it in places where you're getting compound interest but you still have access to it. And so one of the best places for that is a private reserve account because any money you put in it, you have access to it while it's growing. Now, if you have the concept of, I'm growing this for the future, so I'm not gonna use it as my checking account where I'm gonna go in and take money all the time, but it's there if I needed it. But more importantly, it's growing for my future in retirement. And it's a great place because unlike a 401k, um, you can access the money at any time. So you're not waiting till you're 59 and a half. Um, you can, when you access it and take money out of it, it is tax-free to you. So you're not having to pay taxes on that if you needed to you know, use it for a down payment on a house or start your business or whatever you deem necessary to touch that money. But you are, you know, it is earning somewhere between six and 12% compound interest. Um, And so it's a great place for, you know, people to be putting their money. Um, When we talk about entrepreneurs that maybe, you know, now they're just, they're starting their businesses and, um, you know, they know that they may need to um, fund other things with their business later on down the road, they want to be careful to put money in places where they're going to be able to access it. And so this type of an account allows them to do that. And, um, you know, we figure out what what that comfortable amount is for the person to put in it. Um, And the way we do it, we actually, you build it within a life insurance policy. So you're getting about, you're getting three different things um, with one dollar that you're putting in. So you're getting the coverage, the life insurance coverage, or, you know, I call it life assurance, um, because you can also access that if you were to get sick, or you couldn't work for a time, you could access some of that coverage right now while you're alive. So again, it's, it's not a lot about death. Like when we talk about life insurance, sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, you know, here we go talking about death again, but we're talking about things that you're going to need when you're alive. And if, and if you can access that, that's great. And then you get this money growing account, this private reserve account where, you know, you have access to that money. So it's not tied up. You can't wait. To, you know, it's not, you're waiting till you're 59 and a half, which I think for some people that's a deterrent in them thinking about the future because it's like, I can't touch the money now if I needed it, you know, why would I put it? and something that I'm going to access 20, 30 years from now. Um, So I think that that is more of an encouragement to people. Like if I really needed to, I could access this money, but then having it tax-free is I think the other great thing. Um, 
you know, knowing that Uncle Sam isn't going to be coming in and wanting to get his percentage of that um, is a, is an also other great thing. So you do you do need to know how to to build out that account. It is kind of a specialized type of a of a um, strategy, but it is a great way to to have compound interest. Um, one of the other things that that we do as a company that's pretty unusual is help people. Um, add real estate to their portfolio. And for most people, they think, oh, if I'm going to, if I'm going to participate in real estate, like I'm going to need a couple hundred thousand dollars and, and I don't have that. We just talked about just getting out of debt and being a hell of a comfortable vacation. How can I possibly add real estate to my portfolio? Because that's something that is growing somewhere between 12 and 15% a year, but it's actually really easy to do. We utilize land so you're purchasing land in the path of projected growth and you could do something I mentioned earlier in the conversation, you know, people that are maybe have left a corporate job voluntarily or involuntarily and, and now they're able to pursue their passions and they have old 401k money that now is available to them and they could very easily take that money, roll it into a self-directed IRA and now own real estate with it. So it isn't money that they could access directly, but they can certainly take it and put it in something that's going to grow for them at a much higher rate, get that advantage of compound interest and of being in something like a hard asset like real estate and not have any fees, take away the market loss and really be, that's really a smart money strategy um, without them writing a check. Um, and so uh, that's something that a lot of people have utilized because it just makes so much sense. It doesn't cost them any money. They're not going to pay fees anymore, but they're able to put their money in something that's really going to grow a lot, a lot better for them. So there are strategies out there that if you know about them, um, you can utilize them. And then the little bit that, that you do have as you start growing, if you're doing it in places where you never have loss, where you don't have fees and where you have access to it, it just makes sense. And it works far better for you than what the traditional plan is out there. Right. Yeah. The traditional plan does not seem to, you, you know, I, it's one of the things that I often teach when we're, when we're talking about financial fitness um, is that traditional 45 year plan where most people are retiring on half to a third of their income mm -hmm. and they still have the same mortgage payments, the same car payments, the same credit card payments that they were struggling to make prior to that. So um it's absolutely true. Um, these conversations need to be had within the households, within the coupleships. Um, they need to be had sooner than later because some, mm -hmm. there is a too late there, that there is a too late to have this conversation and that's just the reality of it. Um, and you know, they need to be getting in touch with and get educated by, um, you know, I always say, go get educated by people with fruit on the tree. You know, you don't ask your broke brother-in-law <laughs> where to invest your money, yeah. right? Unless you want your broke brother-in-law's results. You want to ask where to invest your money from people who actually have fruit on the tree and have success there. So yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate you coming. You shared so much. There's so much more we could unpack. Um, like yeah. you said, that the whole mon money mindset um, itself is, you know, easily multiple episodes. So um, you're you're welcome to come back anytime. I'm sure that um, the audience learned as much as I did from you today. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Um, how does how do how would the listeners get in touch with you if they wanted to start to explore some of the different things that you had discussed? Yeah, well, thank you so much, Brenda. It was it was a pleasure to be here, and I I love having these conversations. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm always open to more of them. Um, I can be found um, on LinkedIn, Anna Felix, A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, uh, Felix. Uh, I also am on Facebook, Anna Felix, Smart Money Strategist. 
and people can reach out to me. I, on all of those avenues, I have, you know, my phone number 209-613-9445. People can just reach out, ask a question, um, send me a text, whatever you, your preferred way of communication, but I'm always here um, open to giving great information. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a guest on the show today and come back anytime. All right. Thank you, Brenda. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.